The first title is History. The first thing we learn from prolonging duration of meditation on the tree of life is the magic memory. The magic memory is omniscient of past events and can, by applying periodic cycles, rightly predict the future. However, because chaos increases in Asaya, we are only able to see our universe expanding from within. However, if we elevate our point of view to faster than the speed of light, then we can see that it is only because our universe is being swallowed up into a hypersphere surrounding us. Just as yet Syra is passing through Asaya, our material reality is being consumed into the energy of the emanations. Asaya is dissolving into Bariah by yet Syra passing through it. Now, another name for the world of Bariah or Eden surrounding Asaya, our material universe, is some over histories of all particles in the universe. The sum over histories is the halo of wormholes and baby universes surrounding our universe as it is being eaten apart from within by black holes. This is the multiverse of tachyons in n dimensions called hyperspace and called the world of Bariah or Eden. This is, it should be recalled, only the lowest of the kingdoms of heaven. The seven lower sephirot are the seven color spectrum of light that comprises the barrier between our universal singularity, our center of which is the Milky Way's galactic core and the multiversal sum over histories of tachyonic wormholes that comprises hyperspace of n dimensions surrounding our local three dimensions in a phi over pi torus identical to the aura of our soul and the chakras of the kundalini spiral inside it. All of this is recorded in the knowledge accessible by the magic memory, because all of these things are occurring relative to one another in more or less predictably periodic cycles. Knowledge of the records accessed by the magic memory is collectively called the history of our order. The use of the magical memory attained after one has graduated from labor by studying Yetzirah, the tree of life, and has begun to perceive the multiversal kingdom of paradise, Eden or Bariah, is the subject of teaching in this degree. The second title is Shibboleth, Jachin. Hebrew was esoteric hieroglyphics used among the overseer's order to keep their plans private from the couriers. Likewise, the blueprints the overseers used were draftings of shapes impossible to craft in three dimensions. Penrose triangles, impossible cubes, hypercrosses, toroids, and tesseracts. The Kabbalistic tree of life itself is a tesseract, or hypercube, viewed at antipode, or above one of the shape's figurative edges. The tesseract, or tree of life, was considered a hyperspace square, and the torus a hyperspace circle. Thus, the relationship between the torus and tesseract to the overseers 
was interpreted as a square-shaped circle, or more accurately, the square of equal area to a circle, by the couriers. That is how the pyramids were built, using geometry, a common language spanning across levels that could be separated by alphabets. The couriers who graduated from labor and became overseers learned to understand the strange hypershapes and metaphors used by the overseers and to read Hebrew, a now lost language, modern Hebrew being derived from Aramaic, derived from hieratic, derived from hieroglyphics. All that remains known for certain about the ancient Hebrew alphabet was that it was comprised of 22 letters, equivalent to the 12 constellations of the zodiac, the seven planets, or chakras, and the three supernal elements. With only these 22 phonetic symbols, the overseers were able to represent any number of cosmological relationships. By simply applying them to hypershapes and studying the various complex relationships, the overseers sought to restore understanding of the Atlantean calendar as part of true masonry's arts. In truth, the Atlantean calendar is only a map of the karma in the aura of ourselves, our galaxy, and our universe. The third title is Yetzira. Yetzira is the union of the exterior aura, both of the individual and that of our universe, and its interior spiral, the seven kundalini chakras of the individual, and the seven color spectrum of light. Therefore, the Tree of Life of Yetzira, the Sephirot emanations by which God created, is both the seven lesser Sephirot and the triad of supernal Sephirot. The seven lower Sephirot represent the seven colors and seven chakras, and the three greater Sephirot, the spiritual or higher elements the combinations of mental states occurring between interior mind and exterior matter via the surface tension of the energy that conjoins them. The seven chakras, seven colors, and seven sephirot all form a spiral measuring the interior of the torus, the shape of the soul, the exterior of which is the aura or hypersphere that is the environment surrounding the individual and the multiverse of Bariah. Thus, Yetzirah, the tree of life, is an exterior square model of the interior circular shape of both the soul and the multiverse. Just as the interior soul is a torus, so the exterior tree of life is a tesseract. Just as Bariah is the exterior hypersphere surrounding Asaya, the interior sphere, so is Yetzira a measurement of the difference between them, i.e., a squared circle, or a tesseract with the same area as the difference between the inner and outer hypersphere of the universe surrounded by the multiverse. Thus, we can use the tesseract, tree of life, to measure Yetzira as the change between the interior and outer spheres as Yetzira passes through Asaya and consumes Asaya into Bariah, the multiverse, a process known as 
in evolution. As the multiverse eats the universe over time, the exterior sphere shrinking the interior sphere. The tesseract measures the change between them. Thus, we refer to the tesseract of Tao, sub Tao, ultimate extension of the cube of time or perfect ashlar, and to Thoth, the god of time as Hermes Trismegistus, the thrice greatest. So we call the Tesseract, Tree of Life, an external model of time, and say that it measures the change between our souls and the multiverse. The fourth title is Creation. This refers to the level of Yetzirah, in its proper place, supernal to Bariah, which itself was once paradise upon earth, the multiverse one with the material universe, Bariah upon the face of Asiah. However, when the interior complexification of the initial singularity of our universe appeared from within to begin expanding. At that point of critical mass, when baby universes began bubbling off of our universe through black holes, then Bariah and Yetzirah switched places. And, as the tesseract of Yetzirah and the multiversal exterior hypersphere passed through one another. This was when the universe of material reality fell and became separate from the multiverse of paradise above. This moment, beginning in some places at the first Planck time after the Big Bang and following the formation of the four universally elementary forces, represented the beginning of entropy and the four forces' destruction through inversion. As matter energy is pulled through a black hole, it is inverted into antimatter particles and micro-wavelength tachyons. Thus, each baby universe is only as massive as the amount of energy it consumes, and only as dense as the amount of mass. These black holes are each points on an enormous shifting web of galactic filaments, each connected by microwave tachyon superstrings in hyperspace, comprising the broken and fragmented remains of the originally pre-critical mass, perfect periodicity of all the cycling patterns of matter and energy, and the equilibrium of the four elemental forces. We model this originally perfect periodicity as a tesseract. In truth, it was only Bariah, before yet Syra, created a Sia from it. Paradise was a perfect diamond in the rough, but shattered when cut. Thus, we call the creation both the universe before critical mass and the multiverse after. The creation is the ongoing involution of the multiverse of Bariah through the universe of Asaya, measured by the Tree of Life Tesseract of Yetzirah. This occurs as matter is exchanged out of the universe into the multiverse, through black holes, and energy is exchanged into the universe and out of the multiverse, through the wormholes, or time tunnels, connecting them along the galactic filaments.
all this is simultaneously the creation and destruction of both. The fifth title is Air. The force of air is associated with the Tree of Life Tesseract of Yetzirah. Just as this tesseract changes form over time, so does the wind rustle through the tree. We see the wind by observing the movement of the leaves on the tree. These leaves move and change digitally, some moving while others do not, just like the karmic cliffoth of Chi in our auras. We can therefore only see the true and invisible form of the air, true essence of Yetzirah, surface of Bariah beyond, and Asaya below. By observing the nature and movement of changes to karma in our aura, and this we call meditating on the tree of life because the exterior environment of karma in our aura is a reflection of our interior alignment and flow of kundalini energy through our chakras. There is an ancient Zen cone stating that neither the wind nor the flag is what is actually moving, but only the mind. This refers to the alignment of the lesser will, the individual's mind, with the greater will, the universal mind. When the mind of our universe moves through our own mind, like the wind in the tree or the billowing flag, then we can understand how our emotions and subconscious thoughts occur as more or less regular cycles because they are merely points moving along the edges of hyperspatial shapes such as the tree of life tesseract passing through our minds as our souls involute over time. The longer we maintain this state of clear-mindedness meditating on the tree of life tesseract of Yetzirah the more we will realize these metaforms moving through us all are archetypal to our collective consciousness and that we are all sharing in this splendorous emanating of creation together. The sixth title is Twelve. This refers to the twelve constellations of the zodiac. In Greek, which is more like ancient Hebrew than even modern Hebrew, the twelve consonants stand for the zodiac and the seven vowels for the seven planets. From very early on, at least since the Exodus, if not following then from a long, fragmented prior tradition, it is evident that the seven days of the week were implemented along with the twelve-hour days and twelve-hour nights. Thus, a complex correspondence exists between the seven days and twelve hours of day and night. However, to understand the overseer's point of view on the calendar, you must think like an Atlantean mason. The twelve surround the seven. The seven connect between the twelve in various alignments and arrays. The twelve are compared to the supernal three sephiroth and the planets to the lower seven sephiroth. This is not altogether accurate, however, because Though the seven chakras compare with the seven planets and the seven lower sephirot, the twelve constellations do not compare with the three 
spiritual or alchemical elements. The origins of the Twelve Signs are lost to history, but some philosophical researchers speculate they grew out of the Ten when one of them was divided into two and an additional one interpolated between the two halves. However, this would not account for the splendid math of the twelve constellations, rendering 36 deacons of 10 degrees each, completing the 360 degree circle. The double to form the 72 angels of the Exodus verse, describing the parting of the Red Sea, as well as of Solomon's Goethe. Originally, the 72 were 50 plus 22. This is one side of the arc. The other side was that 12 times 6 equals 72. Thus, by 12 of 22, 72. And thus, by 5, 360 from 72. Just as by 5, 50 from 10. All of this together comprises the Atlantean Tarot, understood rightly as the tool to reading the Atlantean calendar. This concludes the knowledge lecture of the titles of 2B Degree Overseer's Order.